We look forward to providing you with information on the new UPU road safety tools and to hearing from Corios Brazil and Endpost Ireland on their award-winning road safety initiatives. We ask everyone to remain muted throughout the meeting. If you have any questions during the meeting today or the presentations today, we ask that you enter those in the chat function. We will record those questions and address them at the end of the webinar as time allows. Any unanswered questions will be addressed and shared with all attendees after the webinar. If you have questions after the webinar, please submit those to security at upu.int. Welcome to today's webinar, where we delve into a topic that impacts many aspects of our lives road safety. Whether you're a driver, a manager, or a concerned citizen, road safety is an issue that touches us all. It's more than a log logistical or operational concern. It's a matter of saving lives, fostering sustainable development, and protecting our communities. For postal operators, road safety is integral to ensuring reliable services, safeguarding employees, and contributing to the global push for safer roads. Today, we'll explore how the Universal Postal Union is addressing these challenges, offering actionable tools and resources to enhance safety and efficiency within the postal networks. Next slide. Each year, 1.3 million lives are lost to road incidents with an additional 50 million individuals suffering injuries. These numbers are staggering, but they represent more than just statistics. They reflect lives interrupted and communities impacted. So who is affected by these road accidents? Children and young adults are disproportionately affected with road accidents being the leading cause of death for these groups. Beyond the human cost, road accidents impose significant economic burdens. Billions lost annually in medical expenses, lost productivity, and infrastructure damages. For postal operators, road accidents result in delayed deliveries, increased costs for vehicle repairs, and reputational risks underscoring the urgent need for effective road safety strategies. Next slide. In response to this global crisis, the United Nations launched their second decade of action for road safety, covering 2021 to 2030, aiming to reduce global road traffic deaths and injuries by 50% by 2030. Achieving this goal requires a united effort across industries and sectors, including postal services. Road safety is not just about compliance. It's about creating systems that prioritize human lives. By aligning this global initiative, postal operators can play a critical role in reducing accidents while improving operational efficiency and building public trust. Next slide. In November of 2023, the UPU launched its Global Road Safety Plan in response to the UN's call for action. This plan integrates road safety into postal operations, emphasizing the following objectives. Establishing clear policies to prioritize safety. Providing training and tools to empower postal operators globally and promoting knowledge sharing and fostering a culture of safety. Through these efforts, the UPU ensures that safety becomes a cornerstone of po postal networks, benefiting employees, customers, and communities alike. Next slide, please. Developing a safety first culture is central to the success of any road safety program. This culture encompasses training and education, such as regular driver training to ensure adherence to safe driving practices, 
maintenance and monitoring to include routine inspections which minimize risks and downtime. And finally, recognition and rewards, which celebrate good safety practices and reinforce positive behaviors. Safety must be a shared priority across all levels of the organization, ensuring that every team member feels responsible for upholding these standards. Next slide, please. The UBU Road Safety Guidance Document was developed to support designated operators in establishing a comprehensive road safety program or to enhance a current program that exists. These initiatives aim to foster a culture of safety and encourage the development of effective systems and is focused on the five key road safety pillars. Road safety management. That is the first pillar. This speaks to the leadership and accountability and policy creation. The second pillar is safe drivers. Promotes a comprehensive training and evaluation. Safer Fleets focuses on using technology and rigorous maintenance. Post-crash response includes protocols for handling incidents effectively. Building sustainable systems embeds safety into the operational culture. Next slide, please. So let's take a look at each one of these pillars in a little more detail. For road safety management, each organization should develop a road safety policy. If one currently exists and was issued more than three years ago, it should be refreshed and recommunicated. A comprehensive road safety policy should encompass several critical components to ensure the protection of employees, the public, and organizational assets, and will include a clear statement of commitment to road safety from senior management, establish accountability at all levels of the organization, acknowledge the importance of human life and the need to protect it, and will be signed by the leadership at the highest levels of the organization. Separate from conducting a road safety program assessment, but equally important is the need to conduct effective organizational risk assessment. Establishing an effective risk assessment system is helpful in understanding the underlying conditions which promote an environment where, safe, where accidents can happen. The identification of organizational risk can be carried, through, carried out through various methods. Historical data on accidents can be evaluated if it is available. This data can be analyzed to determine common accident root causes, driver demographics, accident locations, extent of resulting damage or injury. Historical information is a good predictor of future incidents provided no mitigations are put in place. Starting here with the data allows you to evaluate the impact of road safety initiatives moving forward. The second item that's important to road safety management, uh, previous slide please, is setting measurable performance indicators for tracking progress and assessing the effectiveness of safety initiatives. This indicator includes metrics such as accident rates, compliance with safety protocols, reviewing performance data, and organizations can identify areas for improvement and make informed decisions to enhance the road safety management system. Performance indicators also provide a basis for recognizing and rewarding good practices and further motivating employees to prioritize safety. Next slide, please. Safe Safer road users is pillar number two. And there are a couple of key components under this pillar. The first is hiring and selection of drivers. Ensuring driver safety is paramount in maintaining the integrity and reliability of our postal operations. This section focuses on the critical process of hiring and selecting drivers. A well-crafted job description is foundational, providing clarity and expectations that align with our safety goals. Research underscores the clearer descriptions not only enhance job performance, but also reduce turnover rates. 
Aligning job descriptions with our organizational safety policies further cultivate a strong safety culture, reducing workplace accidents. Driver's training and focusing on driver safety is a fundamental aspect of maintaining an efficient and reliable delivery service. This section focuses on developing a comprehensive safe training program, a structured curriculum that covers essential topics such as defensive driving, vehicle maintenance, and emergency response is vital. By aligning the training content with our operational practices, we enhance its effectability, effectiveness and applicability, reinforcing the importance of contextual training to improve retention and performance. Next slide, please. In the context of road safety, a well-managed fleet is a fundamental for coastal operators to ensure timely, safe, and efficient delivery services. This section of the guidance document explores key aspects of fleet management, emphasizing the importance of maintaining adequate and well-managed fleet. Effective fleet management involves implementing rigorous regular maintenance schedules, adopting advanced technologies where feasible, fostering a culture of safety and compliance. There are some key components that factor into um, the safer vehicles. By adhering to co comprehensive maintenance schedules and leveraging modern technologies, coastal operators can ensure their fleet remains in optimal condition thereby enhancing road safety and operational reliability. Next slide, please. Pillar number four addresses post-crash response and includes information about the diagnosis and investigation of road incidents. This part of the road safety guidance document focuses on some key areas. Creating a robust safety management system involves not only immediate responses to accidents, but also proactive measures to prevent them. A key aspect of this proactive approach is the development of effective preventative maintenance, accident repair, and control systems. This section outlines the essential components, such as a system designed to ensure vehicle reliability, enhance safety, and optimize operational efficiency. Effective post-crash response is crucial for ensuring road safety, minimizing the impact of accidents. This section delves into the core aspects of accident diagnosis and investigation, providing a structured approach to understanding and analyzing road incidents. There are some key components that enable the accident investigation and diagnosis process, which are outlined in the guidance document. You can see some of those listed here. Establishment of a comprehensive accident investigation protocol, utilization of forensic accident analysis tools, conducting a thorough post-accident vehicle inspection, integration of driver and witness testimonies, coordination with law enforcement and emergency services, and post-investigation analysis and reporting. Next slide, please. Pillar number five. This is building sustainable systems. Creating a sustainable road safety program is essential for ensuring long-term improvements in road safety and operational efficiency. A sustainable approach integrates ongoing continuous improvement and adaptive technologies, fostering a culture of safety that permeates all levels of an organization. By recognizing good practices, monitoring accidents, conducting root cause analysis and committing to a regular program assessment schedule, a postal operator builds a system that fosters safety for years to come. The holistic strategy not only enhances the safety and well-being of employees and the public, but also builds resilience against evolving challenges, ensuring that safety measures remain effective and re relevant over time such as a program ultimately leads to more reliable and efficient operations, contributing to the organization's overall success and reputation. A few of the components that make up the building sustainable systems within the road safety guidance speak to the recognition of good practices, 
Recognizing good behavior and practices in road safety is a powerful tool for fostering culture of excellence and continuous improvement within the organization. Implementing a structured framework with a diverse award mechanisms caters to all levels of achievement, promoting broad participation and ongoing engagement. Monitoring of road accidents and root cause analysis. Recognizing and rewarding good behavior and practices is essential for fostering a culture of excellence in road safety. However, it is equally important to monitor road safety accidents and meticulously and conduct a thorough root cause analysis to understand and address the underlying issues that lead to such incidents. A sustainable and effective road safety program hinges on the ability to identify patterns, analyze data, and implement corrective actions. Establishing a continuous cycle of road safety program reassessments is crucial for maintaining and enhancing road safety standards within coastal operations. This ongoing process ensures that safety measures remain relevant, effective, and aligned with emerging risks and best practices. The value of this cycle can be understood through three components, continuous improvement, adaptability to change, and enhanced accountability. Next slide, please. And finally, within the road safety guidance document, you will find it offers practical tools, such as templates for risk assessment and policy creation, as well as frameworks for tracking and improving safety measures. By leveraging these resources, coastal operators can reduce accidents, lower costs, and enhance their organizational reputation. Now let's take a look at the new, the new road safety assessment tool. Next slide, please. So why does self-assessment matter? The road safety assessment tool will help coastal operators evaluate their current safety practices. It enables gap identification by highlighting areas that are in need of improvement. It assists with resource allocation. It allows the DO to be able to prioritize investments based on their needs. And it allows for progress tracking. The DO can monitor advancements towards their safety goals over time to see the trends. Focusing on the five pillars of the road safety um, tool, the these assessment is built to align with that. It enables DOs to assess their current road safety program and score each area. It allows each DO to identify well-performing areas as well as those areas where there are opportunities for improvement. It can be used by the DO to decide where and how to invest their resources. And finally, sharing the information with UPU enables the UPU to make decisions about how they can better support road safety on a regional or global basis. Next slide, please. So let's take a look at the tool. All right, so what you see here is the landing page of the UPU Road Safety Assessment Tool. This is where you will find a summary page of how they have scored on the tool and um, some other information. So really on this section, the only thing you would need to complete is where uh, the country office or duty station, so you would put your organizational unit name and then the date. So you um, have a record of when the assessment was conducted. The next section below highlights for you the five pillars that we've discussed relating to the road safety guidance document. This summary will populate as you answer questions throughout the assessment tool. Below that is a chart that will also, a graphic that will also expand and populate as the information is filled out on each one of the tabs and pillars. So let's start with the first pillar, road safety management tab. In this tab, we can see that there are questions that relate to road safety management as outlined in the UPU uh, guidance document. 
So let's just start with the first question on this particular tab. Does the organization have a design, defined road safety policy? If you do not, you would put a one in the first column after that. So that one um, is representative of the score that you receive for that particular item. And um, let's say you did have an excellent program. You have developed that policy. It's been signed and communicated by leadership. Um, then that would be an example of perhaps where you would give yourself, assign yourself the score of four. You can only have one score at any time um, for each question, or you should only have one score. Now you can see in both of these cases that under the actual uh, cell, you will see the number four. As you score each one of these areas, each pillar tab will populate and calculate your score. No. Please mute yourself. This, this screen is not clear. So if, you can, if you can zoom the screen, this, this particular screen is not clear. Can we, can we mute Theophilus? Thank you. Um, okay, so the next column is under column L. And column L is the comment section. So we would ask that you populate information in there that describes the reason why you gave the score you did. For example, if it's a four and you have a good policy, you would say that you have a, a policy that's been distributed, maybe put the date the policy was created. Um, so that is one of the features of this tool. But let's say um, you have filled out this entire form and now you have, let's say, for example, you have fours in each section. So uh, we're just gonna demonstrate that to show you how the tool functions. If we can uh, replicate the fours in every question, thank you so much just for simplification. Thank you. And then we'll click another tab and maybe say under safer drivers, the scores were actually threes. So just for the demonstration purposes, we're gonna give scores of three under the column header of developing. Maybe you are not quite as developed in this particular area. So we're gonna replicate that all the way down just for demonstration purposes. And now we'll go back to the score tab. All right, so you can see here under the score tab in the summary table where the score of 68 has been carried over from the road safety management tab and is listed under developed. You can also see where the safer vehicles as we scored it is listed under um, the developing tab based on the score. And on the right-hand side, you will see the score assigned to each section as well as the overall score. The goal, of course, is to have all sections in green, but the reality is that everybody comes into this at a different level. And so it's more important to show growth over time and improvements over time. So if we scroll down below a little bit, you can see the uh, graphic tool has started to populate based on the scores that were entered. Now it looks a little strange right now, it looks like a triangle, but that's because we only filled out part of the form. Ideally, if you scored well in every section, this uh, graphic would fill out to be a complete pentagon. I like to think of it as a house. So if I have my road safety policies and practices in order, then my house is in order and it will demonstrate that on this graphic. All right, thank you um, for that demonstration and we'll move back to the presentation. All right, so Again, if you have questions, I know we had someone indicate that they maybe couldn't see the screen as well. Um, or you have questions on the specifics of this spreadsheet, we will ask you to submit those um, either in the chat section or in the uh, to security at upu.int. 
All right, so the next step in the UPU tools is the road safety awareness e-training. An interactive animated online road safety awareness e-training course is developed in development and will include regulatory overview, risk assessment and hazard identification, vehicle maintenance and safety checks, information on drive, defensive driving, information on driver behavior, attitude and personal habits, and emergency response and accident procedures. Next slide, please. So what is the need for training and what are the benefits of the road safety training? Well, the benefits of having a solid road safety training include reducing accidents and injuries, promoting responsible driver behavior, saving on vehicle maintenance and insurance costs, and enhancing employee well-being and morale. Driver behavior remains one of the most significant factors in road safety. The UPU's animated training course is designed to touch on critical areas that impact driver safety and operational efficiency. Among other things, this course aims to equip drivers with the skills and knowledge needed to mitigate risks and respond effectively to challenges on the road. Next slide, please. Here are some of the course features. The training combines accessibility and interactivity to maximize learning, retention, and practical application. The key areas that will be addressed speak to regulatory compliance, risk assessment and hazard identification, vehicle maintenance and safety checks, defensive driving techniques, driver behavior and stress management techniques, emergency response procedures. Next slide, please. We're going to give you a short preview of the training that's in development to give you an idea of what the training will look like. I'm gonna check the audio. Welcome to the Universal Postal Union Training Module on Road Safety. By the end of the module, you will understand the importance of knowing the local and national road safety laws that apply to postal operations. Develop skills to effectively identify and mitigate road hazards. Gain knowledge on regular vehicle maintenance as it relates to safety checks to ensure postal delivery vehicle reliability and safety. Master defensive driving principles and techniques to enhance road safety. Analyze the impact of driver behavior on road safety and implement strategies for maintaining a positive attitude and safe driving habits. Understand how to effectively respond to road incidents. This module will cover six key areas, including everything you need to help keep our roads safer and ensure every delivery is made on time. Click the first sign to start exploring and make safety our top priority on the road and off. Adhering to regulatory standards is essential not only for compliance, but also for safeguarding lives, protecting assets, and maintaining operational integrity. Understanding national and local road safety laws is critical for postal operators worldwide to ensure the secure and timely delivery of mail and packages. Compliance with these laws reduces the risk of accidents, protects postal workers and the public, and minimizes legal consequences. It's important to know where to find these regulations, so check with your supervisor if you're unsure. Equally important is adhering to vehicle safety standards, which involves regular inspections of brakes, tires, lights, and safety equipment to meet stringent safety requirements. Driver licensing requirements, which may vary by country and locality, often include obtaining a valid commercial driver's license or CDL with the necessary endorsements, passing written and practical exams, and undergoing medical evaluations to ensure drivers are fit for duty. Proper load securing is another critical aspect as it prevents accidents caused by shifting cargo by ensuring all loads are secured with appropriate restraints and devices. Understanding and adhering to these regulatory requirements underpins our commitment to road safety helping us protect our employees, maintain operational integrity, and uphold our reputation for safety and reliability. 
So that's just a brief preview of the new training that will be available soon. It's in the final stages of development and uh, we hope for it to be available on train post in early February. Finally, you can find all the new road safety guidance tools on the UPU Postal Security webpage to include the UPU Global Safety, uh, Global Plan for Road Safety, the guidance document, the assessment tool, and assessment tool instructions. And you can find the training link um, once the training has been loaded in train post, you'll be able to see it there. If you have questions or if you would like specific training on any of these tools, um, please reach out through security at upu.int. Next slide, please. All right, let's learn from the best. I'm honored to introduce our next speaker, who serves as the Corporate Fleet Manager for Corios Brazil and the Chair of the UBU Road Safety Expert Team. Two years running, Corios was awarded the Mayo Amarelo or Yellow May Highlights Award from the National Road Safety Observatory for their initiatives related to road safety. Danielle Duarte Almeida Roca is here to provide more insights into their road safety initiatives. Danielle, I'm turning it over to you. Hello, how are you, Susan? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, it's a pleasure to be here to share the road safety initiatives we are developing at uh, Correios do Brasil. I am Daniele, the National Fleet Manager of Correios, and currently serving as the Chair of Road Safety at UPU. We are honored to be here participating in this webinar to share our best practices on the subject. Uh, here at uh, Correios in, in Brazil, we have our implement uh, robust policies and process to ensure the acquisition of safer vehicles. However, we have highlights uh, that this alone is not enough. It is essential to prioritize the lives of uh, our employers. Today, mechanical engineer, Mr. Alberto, who is present here, we led the presentation. Feel free to direct any questions to him as he will be available to assist with communication. I thank you all for being here, especially Miss Susan, uh, for making this meeting possible. You can count on me and the entire chorus to Brazil team. Alberto. Uh, hello, greetings, everybody. Uh, first of all, we would like to make an overview about Brazil. Brazil has a territory of over 8.5 million square kilometers and about 5,500 5, cities. To serve the, the most 200 million Brazilians with quality and excellence, the Brazilian Postal Service rely on approximately 26,000 motor vehicles, more than 8,000 bicycles, and almost 5,000 walking mail carriers. Next slide, please. With 40,000 40, employees making postal deliveries daily, the Brazilian Postal Service needs to be concerned with road safety. In the year 2023, there were more than 4,000 traffic accidents involving our drivers, resulting in a cost of over 200,000 US dollars in compensation to third parties. Additionally, traffic violations result in a cost of over 100,000 US dollars. Next slide, please. So we have an accident prevention program that are made in four pillars. The first one is awareness, as we are trying to raise awareness among drivers about traffic laws, creation of a campaign logo for accident prevention, and disseminate the regulations for recognition awards. Next slide, please. The second one is for communication. We're trying to make on-job training, videos, lectures, and podcasts, awareness stickers inside the vehicles, and digital leaflets for all our drivers. Next slide, please. The third one is recognition. Award for the best operational units, 
evaluating fuel efficiency indicators, maintenance cost indicators, and the quality of traffic accident information. It will be an award for the best driver, evaluating fuel efficiency, and the frequency of traffic accidents and, viol and violations. Next slide, please. And the last one, our main goal is always to preserve lives. We need to reduction of traffic accident rates and traffic violations and promote peace on the road. Next, please. Correios de Brazil has a partnership with the National Road Safety Observatory that is a non-profit social institution dedicated to developing actions that are effectively contribute to the reduction of the high rates of occurrences in Brazilian traffic. It acts as a special consultative organization with Economical and Social Council of the U UN and is aligned with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. As part of a, our Yellow May campaign, we nice, we like to share you with the, a little video that takes a, about what we are trying to achieve. Deafening explosions and incessant gunfire break the silence of the streets. As the debris accumulates and smoke takes to the skies and covers the entire... I can't believe we're still in this situation. It feels like a replay of an old movie. When will we learn that with intolerance we always lose? We need to evolve and find another way to move forward. And listen to the voice of reason. Which is always telling us... Hey, the world needs peace. Because no one deserves to live in a war zone. We deserve to walk in peace. Without fear. Feeling that life is respected. Knowing that when differences are resolved with patience, the result is peace. of peace that grows with every act of responsibility and kindness. The peace that makes us more aware. The peace that generates genuine kindness and smiles. The peace that can heal the world. Peace in traffic starts with you. Thank you for sharing. We can go to the next slide, please. So the Brazil road safety campaign that Correios is taking part of has a target audience of motorcyclists, drivers, cycling postmen, managers, and other persons that are related to road safety. Our key objectives are to raise awareness among drivers and other employees about traffic loss, reduction in accident and infraction, those will be trying to communicate on tools, resulting in videos, workplace training, speeches, itinerant fleet, digital leafleting, communication, podcasts, awareness stickers inside vehicles, program pins, creation of the program logo, and see we're alluding to the loss prevention program. Next, please. For our road safety campaign, Correios have been recognized for two consecutive years in 2023 and 2024, receiving the Ye Yellow May Highlight Awards presented by the National Road Safety Observatory to recognize the actions of public and private entities regarding road safety. Next slide, please. So there's a calendar of our campaign that has been held from April to September, and we are still on, on track for our, our final year. And we had the preparation of the program, the opening of the road safety uh, related teams of, of dry law, cell phone and driving, cyclists and pedestrians, and National Traffic Week that's been held in September with other organizations. Next slide, please. 
for a, for a road safety campaign, the next steps will be creation of traffic violation and traffic accident indicators, in-person education activities at the largest units, targeted training for drivers with the highest numbers of traffic violations and accidents, and the implementation of telematics in our vehicles. I thank you all for, for the presentation and back to you, Susan. Thank you so much, Danielle and Alberto, for the insightful presentation and information on Brazil's road safety initiatives. Our next presentation is from Ann Post. In 2023, Ann Post was recognized by the European Road Safety Charter for their campaign, Driving Towards Zero Initiative. Here to tell us about this initiative is Terence McKinley, Regional Safety Advisor for Ann Post. Terry, I'm turning it over to you. Sorry, good afternoon, everybody from Ireland. Uh, uh, Susan, can you hear me? I can hear you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, listen, I, before we start, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Susan and the UPU for an opportunity to speak on behalf of Unpost in relation to uh, their driving towards zero uh, initiative, which, which took place over a number of years and resulted in um, achieving a 2023 award from the European Transport Safety Council in Brussels. Uh, so Unpost uh, Commerce. Or post business. On post, quite simply and literally in English, means the post, or as we more commonly known as the Irish Postal Services. Uh, so our initiative, uh, driving towards zero, at times gets confused with uh, emissions, vehicle emissions, and other things like that. But in essence, the name um, was derived with a few towards driving towards zero accidents and deaths. Uh, in our workplaces and on Irish roads. Uh, so as a major um, uh, organisation within Ireland, we have a major impact on road safety within Ireland. We're a major commercial organisation within Ireland. We're one of the largest employees, and we have over 10,000 directly employed people. We have a large property portfolio spanning the country. And our country, unlike Brazil, it's approximately uh, 85,000 square kilometres or I think that's 33,000 uh, square miles, in essence, geographically. Uh, and first operates the most extensive distribution network, and we've over 3,500 vehicles and some 5,200 delivery staff. Next slide, please. And so this is kind of, this uh, graph kind of gives a simplified uh, explanation as to what Unpost is about. And uh, it, it is small because our, our population at the moment is only 5.2 million, and that's quite a small population. But uh, uh, so our impact, and if you look at the kind of breakdown of our operations, we we have, uh, for example, we're probably one of the leaders in relation to cargo e trikes in Ireland. Uh, with that, fee, we have actually 180, but in operation any one time we're around 120, and we have light and heavy commercial vehicle fleets uh, over. Three and a half thousand. And when we talk about LCV and HCV vehicles, in essence, we're talking about uh, uh, vehicles over any vehicle over three and a half ton of gross weight is uh, classified as a heavy commercial vehicle or heavy goods vehicle. And vehicles under that gross loading or weight are known as light commercial vehicles. And I suppose the distinction there is the difference in the licensing required by drivers to drive those particular vehicles. And also the competencies around heavy commercial vehicles or heavy goods vehicles there is much more intense. Uh, so our total routes are approximately 3,900. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, so this diagram shows the extent and volume of our mails network. Now you're probably wondering why there's a piece bitten out of the map at the top. Well, simply, uh, Ireland has 32 uh, counties and six of those are uh, managed, if you like, 
for want of a better word, by uh, the UK. Uh, the other two is 26 countries are the Republic of Ireland. And so you can see how extensive, and to the east, you can see a cluster, which obviously is Dublin and is a major hub and is the capital of Ireland. And uh, if you look at the breakdown of volumes, uh, the southern part of the country, because of geographic and everything else, has almost 40% of total male volumes. Next slide, please. And so when we set out to have our own safety charter, uh, we didn't look at winning a prize when we went to Europe. Uh, we went to Europe to try and put Ireland and try and put uh, on post on a European stage and to share common interests in relation to road safety. And not only in the context of safety, but also workplace safety, because when we're driving for work and when we're managing fleets and people and infrastructure, we tend to forget about our workplaces, the workplaces that we emanate from and uh, ensuring that they are safe, uh, whatever else. So our mission statement is to be part of eliminating all sorts of serious and fatal accidents on Irish roads as part of the wider EU initiative, which is called Vision Zero. And this is a vision set out by the EU Road Safety Charter and the EU Commission in relation to eliminating road deaths by, I think it's uh, 2030. And it's also Ireland's fifth government road safety strategy which outlines road safety priorities for the next uh, decade or so. Next slide, please. And so this is our target audience. And I really, I've looked at this slide a few times and I probably could have just told you, well, our target audience is everybody in Ireland. Because postmen, as you well know, uh, in early morning or whatever else there, and our peak risk is always around the hours between 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., quite simply because everybody, all of our staff are moving at that time, as well as the rest of the population. Uh, so, so we have 10,000 staff, we have 2,500 contractors, and we have 5.2 million of a population, I'm led to believe, at the moment. Uh, next slide, please. And so this is just... Uh, uh, to give you an idea of, of our fleet or whatever else. And the top left, the cargo strikes there are very innocuous or whatever else. But as a company, we have spent months actually trying to get to a stage where by we we ensure that any part of our transport fleet or whatever else there is fit for purpose. And that means there it's not enough to give anybody a vehicle, but the role and function that it's required to undertake, it must be fit for that purpose. And so, for example, the cargo trikes are a good example. Cargo trikes, I think, uh, uh, are designed for urban areas where uh, the ground is kind of level, it's pedestrianized or whatever else, it's easily accessible, there's no raised footpaths, there's no great traffic flows, flows there. They're not uh, ideal in heavily built up areas, uh, city centers and the like, even though it does take this from time to time. A big issue around cargo cycles uh, that I have to say is it's it's uh, they look pretty innocuous whatever else, but uh, the risk around them can be significant because the the user of the cargo cycle is completely exposed not just to the elements but to other road transport. And when you consider that some of these cargo cycles, the ones we employ, that the same footprint as a small vehicle. Uh, so we have a made. Uh, small and mid range for vehicles. Our fleet is constantly growing and plus is in the middle of a transformation at the moment in relation to fleet. And we are the leader at the moment in Ireland in relation to advancement in EV technology and infrastructure. Uh, so we use road trains, double deck trailers, 30 foot, 40 foot, 50 foot, 60, and we also have contractors. And so the bottom center picture there is again another innocuous vehicle there that's used by a lot of companies across Europe, known as a box fan. And it's simply called a box fan because of the shape of the fan itself. And an issue we had with these when we started using them and risk assessing them, uh, very easy to overload a box fan. The licensing to drive it is only the same as a three and a half ton, only three and a half ton is because the uh, they're very easily overloaded. So if you have them in your fleet, it's something kind of to reflect on. Next slide, please. And so you, we couldn't have any safety initiative, any transport safety project there without senior management engagement. And on POST has uh, 
as I said, been transforming uh, essentially over the last 10 years. And so we, we almost have our own in-house institute for learning. And a big part of this around transport safety management is frontline um, uh, training for managers, especially managers who's responsible for managing uh, drivers and uh, local fleets or whatever else. And so how, how we arrived at our campaign and uh, I suppose arrived at a degree of success was before we started out uh, this campaign in about 2021, 20, 2022, we carried out a complete review in tandem with our transport safety people uh, uh, and local manager representatives, operation manager staff or unions. We set everybody down around the table on simple terms. We talked about uh, an approach we would take towards trying to make uh, driving for work and our workplaces uh, around transport safety uh, to be a safer place. Okay, next slide, please. And so this is just a snapshot of some of our project ob objectives. And so we looked at the light commercial vehicles. We did a huge amount of work on that. And we looked at our HGVs, which are totally separate entity there, because the requirements for facilities and that, that are different. They're the areas that to navigate uh, within Ireland there uh, geographically would be different. Uh, all the HGVs are on major and primary uh, routes and arteries, while the smaller vehicles can be anywhere around the country. Uh, so as part of this, we also looked at our move towards uh, our green initiative, the decarbonisation of our fleet. fleet. And uh, I think about at this stage, we have about 45% of our fleet currently uh, can run on alternative fuel sources as well as electricity. We're one of the first companies in the country uh, to have a rollout of uh, hydrogenated fuel oil uh, for our fleet. And we're continuing with that initiative towards uh, having a totally green policy and uh, whatever else. Uh, next slide, please. And so so this is uh, part of one of the initiatives there was the use of telematics. And while a lot of companies have telematics there, uh, it, it's not that they're afraid to use them, but there might be some uh, confusion as to should, how they should be used. And in, within Europe there, the GDPR, uh, uh, tell us what we can capture and can't capture in relation to people. Uh, so we made an agreement with our unions and our staff that the only information that would be collected on telematics there would be in relation to preventing accidents and injuries there and improving road safety and safety on local sites. And so we so we gathered information, telematic information on speeding. Uh, we looked at aid for route design, which have left obviously leads to better efficiencies. And we looked at the likes of live tracking and event of breakdowns there and emergency situations. An important part of this was that that when we had this role in our IT and technical people and our people, the data controllers we have, they issued uh, local reports in relation to speeding, breaches of speeding on a weekly basis, the local sites. And within a period of a year, we've seen a huge difference in behaviors, excuse me, <laughs> Uh, at local site levels. Next slide, please. And so we also uh, looked at the need for a simplified version of a book or a manual that our drivers could have that would encompass all of their needs in relation to driving. And a lot of manuals, and I'm sure if you look maybe closer to some of your own, and I'm sure they're very advanced and very good, but there's always room for improvement. And uh, we arrived at our manual simply by consulting our staff on the ground, consulting our drivers who have all of the experience and uh, having all the other stakeholders involved in developing this manual. And so we now have a situation where the manual is not only uh, a guide for drivers that they can refer to and uh, adhere to the rules within it there, but it's also uh, a guide for frontline managers who may manage them in relation to their driving behaviours and uh, just uh, looking at breaches and all of those other bits and pieces to kind of go on on a day-to-day -day basis. 
And so the development of it's and it is a bespoke driver's manual which we create ourselves and develop and publish ourselves encompasses all aspects of the postal driver role and their impact of their driving behavior on other road users when at work. Next slide, please. Oh, uh, sorry, could you just move on the slide a little bit? I just once more. Okay, and so we did a lot of work with Irish Rail prevent accidents at rail crossings and rail bridge strikes. Uh, so Ireland is part of the country itself, very rural. Uh, on the, the, the secondary roads, we have a lot of railway bridges. And uh, from time to time, uh, uh, our vehicles have not gone off road, but have got, uh, there's been some confusion or probably a mix up and you end up on these roads and uh, you end up with a situation where you have somebody in a very large truck trying to get in under a bridge, which is almost virtually impossible. And in the past, we've had some of our vehicles have struck these bridges. And as you know, when you strike a bridge there, it's a very significant incident in that the rail infrastructure has to be closed down. It has to be inspected. There's a huge cost to the rail. And uh, notwithstanding this, our company is also subject to prosecutions and all kind of uh, legal connotations. So we did a lot of work uh, with Irish Rail over the last couple of years, and we arrived at producing risk assessments, realistic and simplified risk assessments in relation to how we would navigate uh, these obstacles, for want of a better word. Uh, the picture on the left, uh, sorry, the left of your screen there shows uh, an impost fan that was struck by a train uh, about seven years ago down in the west of Ireland. And... Uh, uh, to be honest with you, uh, that was kind of a wake up call for us because on any day we could have uh, a number of drivers trying to navigate these rail crossings there and been exposed to this significant risk. Now, the other side of this is well that the rail networks are constantly upgrading their crossings to be automated there and manned. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, another initiative uh, as part of this campaign was the retrofitting of our smaller vehicles with audio handbrake alarm modules. This simply meant uh, because we were having a number of rollaways, or and simply a rollaway is where the driver drives his fan up to a location. He gets out of the vehicle, uh, normally without applying the handbrake. He goes off and does his business and comes back, and his vehicle has gone off down the road with the potential to cause injury and or death uh, to uh, third parties. So it's a very significant failure and uh, it's a difficult one to address. And uh, it's something we're continuing to work at. But uh, the campaign that we conducted, uh, we had a lot of emphasis on this and uh, tried to apply a particular procedure. We risk assessed it, we had briefings, we communicated to staff our safety task procedures, our risk assessments. Uh, we developed videos and uh, we did see an improvement. But like any improvements, and I think Susan mentioned it, uh, you should be thinking safety strategically in the long term. And uh, obviously you'll have some short term ambitions and you'll have some gains. But the whole idea is to keep things going steady, like a ship at sea. So the retrofitting of LCPs was a big part of our program. Uh, and uh, so on. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so so a key part of 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 managing drivers, obviously, uh, the three elements are normally the infrastructure, the fleet itself there, and the driver. Uh, is was was training for us, and uh, so we do a lot of in-house training, but we also engage and hire a lot of external trainers uh, to manage this element of our fleet. And so without going down, down through, you can see the extent there's eight different kind of uh, modules to the training we do. And we also included a new one uh, over the last couple of years, which was electric vehicle familiarization. You might think that that's something that's uh, not significant because they are very safe or whatever else. But a lot of the data around electric vehicle fleets that's coming out at the moment there is uh, gaining new traction. And so uh, we learned from the, the uh, 
from moving from the normal ice or internal combustion fleet, such as petrol and diesel, to electric, that the risk, some of our risk has changed. And for example, uh, you note that when you drive an electric vehicle, you have instant torque, whereas with the other vehicles, there was accumulation of whatever else. So that's very significant if drivers are not trained and educated to anticipate that. Uh, the other side of that was electric vehicles carry an inherent risk in the event of crash, in that you have, uh, you might have key components of the engine and battery exposed that carry fatal charges of electrical currents. And uh, so all our drivers, all our new drivers get a pro, a pro driver awareness. We have, we have on a, an annual basis, we have, uh, we have uh, driver training and updates. Uh, we have for our heavy goods vehicle fleet, we have a CPC that's uh, managed by the government of Ireland there, uh, yeah. the Road Safety Authority, namely. And uh, that's a whole separate program that requires attendance uh, a number of hours each year, or whatever else, in classroom. And uh, and also C E C and C E license acquisitions. The next slide, please. And so, so we're in the uh, era of social media, and the global village concept is an old concept now. And so, uh, we decided that we would kind of go in to overdrive to promote what we were trying to do as well. And it didn't take a whole lot of effort there. So the bottom left there is an application that our company developed. It's known as the uh, Post People app, and it allows uh, servant members of the company, 10,000 and all former members, to sign up to this app there, and so they can get all the different safety bulletins and information around transport and, uh, uh, and, be, and be educated. Uh, so in the center, we developed our own safety website, and within that website, we have a full database and access to all of our risk assessments in relation to transport safety, and we issue bulletins on a day-to-day -day basis. We have a bright idea program which encourages our staff to contact the managers there if they have issues there that the think can improve safety and improve how to work on a day-to-day -day basis. And a post has a learning pathways there, staff development program and frontline management program. And we, apart from this, we have a number of other issues. And as we're in a period of transformation at the moment, and every, on a yearly basis, this is uh, almost changing. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, so we also developed a number of bespoke transport safety videos, uh, such as round vehicle checks, digital tachographs, uh, checking tires, and uh, their driver CPC, which is professional confidence for heavy goods vehicle drivers. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, so, so, so we developed uh, our, and we utilized uh, the SharePoint uh, platform that you're probably familiar with in Microsoft. And we have a library of all of the safety documents that a manager would need and staff can also access them, access them uh, both from their phones and from uh, desktop or uh, uh, remote IT applications. And so we've migrated all of our safety documents to SharePoints. It's an information sharing application, as you probably know, and all of our managers can now directly access transport safety documents from a single portal. So nobody's in the dark. Next slide, please. And so we also had a transport of safety toolbox talks. And so this is given by frontline managers on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, or when anything significant is required to be communicated. And uh, each one of our sites has a safety notice board dedicated to just safety and transport issues, and it's updated uh, on a weekly basis. So the day of people not being in the know and being uh, consulted and communicated to doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, next slide, please. And so our three regional transport managers and our transport section there uh, uh, attended um, ISO 45001 uh, training and, and post is certified to ISO 45001. And so we had a raft of uh, and an increase of site audits across all of our sites in relation to the fleet itself, in relation to the transport and site facilities, 
and also spoke to staff there and they looked at issues such as uh, the wearing of seatbelts, the wearing of PPE, uh, the application of handbrakes, and just the general layout and demeanor of people and uh, their driving behaviors and use, using their vehicles. Uh, next slide, please. And this is a key one for me, and it's something I feel that uh, if people take anything from us today is that uh, uh, it's our bread and butter. And what we've spent over the last four years doing is we've gone away from all of our desk-based risk assessments. And what we've done to make them more comprehensible and easily understood is that we reviewed and simplified all of our transport risk assessments. And we have, we have, well, we haven't got hundreds, but we've quite a few, we're probably up in the 80s or 90 transport risk assessments. So every aspect of what a driver is expected to do, the type of transport, uh, so on and so forth, is uh, contained within these. And uh, so Ireland, uh, there's other considerations with the game. We have a large non-national population, which is a good thing in Ireland. And uh, so we have a lot of those demographics coming into our workforce. And uh, so we needed to communicate things in simple terms. So the use of photograph, pictograms, and simple terms uh, uh, we used to promote and encourage people uh, to reach out for these risk assessments. And these are available in a hard copy format to staff on every site across our country. And we promote them across the Post People app and on all our other websites. Uh, if you need to look at any of these, you'll find them on the European Union Road Safety Charter website uh, under on post, and they're there to download. Uh, next slide, please. And so we also looked at, uh, well, a lot of postal uh, um, uh, groups across uh, the EU and worldwide uh, have handheld communication center. We've started using them for uh, with a few to doing vehicle checks uh, in relation to loan working. Uh, we have uh, set numbers in them to, so that you can ring out or ring in off these devices. And uh, we can also be used in breakdown and adverse weather conditions. So the loan working one was very significant for us because we have a detailed risk assessment in relation to that. If we have staff on the side of a mountain, God forbid, in a part of Ireland, uh, working in snowy or bad adverse weather conditions there, the need, uh, we need to be able to contact them at all times and vice versa. Next slide, please. And so at a glance, and uh, well, thank you for your patience. Uh, so this is what we garnered in 2003, and this is, I think, why we, uh, we were able to demonstrate, um, you know, that we've taken significant initiatives. There are a number of initiatives there. Uh, so our accident severity rates uh, in 2003 had fallen uh, significantly by nearly 50%, and that is very significant. Uh, our RTA offence were down almost 60% uh, over a three-year period. Uh, our actual injury from vehicle accidents, our road traffic accidents was down, uh, especially from rollaways, was down from 42 to 4. And we attribute this to, to, uh, to highlighting and... Uh, pushing it in the face, if you want, of our drivers and our managers and whatever else there, and browbeating them, if you like, there. But uh, uh, to such an extent that they couldn't ignore it as an issue. Uh, our five years, uh, like commercial vehicle rollovers, have continued to be reduced. The down, they were down to 14 in 2023. They're slightly up this year. And our IR1s, and these are accidents uh, that incur people are out of work for greater than three days. Uh, and are reportable to the Health and Safety Enforcement Authority in Ireland. They were down by 0.75% there and less year on year up until 2023. So we had a 70 cent reduction in speeding, and that's very significant. And we attribute this to an improved and increased use of our telematics. And uh, when you consider we have 7.3 million uh, kilometers traveled by our fleet. And just the last thing there. Is it, is it in, can it be attributed or as part of a road safety well, it's, it's there anyway. So we also avoided a million and a half euros in fuel costs through better fuel, uh, fuel efficiencies and planning. Uh, thank you for your time.
Thank you, Terrence, for your informative presentation on the Driving Towards Zero campaign. There's so many good nuggets in both your presentation and the Brazil presentation that we hope people garner some ideas for their own operators. We have reached the end of our webinar and we have not, as of this moment, received any questions in the chat. We will post this recording of the webinar on the Postal Security page on, in the Road Safety section. Thank you again for your attendance and your commitment to road safety. Have a good afternoon.